Hey everyone, hope you are all doing very well. Welcome back to another video here on the channel. In today's video, we're going to be talking about motor manufacturers. Do they lie about the KV value that we see on brushless motors? And is this very similar to how a LiPo manufacturer would lie about a C rating that goes on the battery? This is what we're going to take a look at here today and we're going to break it down into several components. The first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how you can easily capture the KV value of your brushless motor at home using very basic tools. I'm going to throw in a clip that goes through that. We've done this here in the past. Then what we're going to do is we're going to compare a bunch of data that we've collected with all the different motors that we're measuring. I'm not going to show how to measure every single one. I'm going to only do that with one motor, show you how to measure it. From there, it's very repetitive. And you do the exact same steps whether it's an in runner or an out runner style brushless motor. We're going to look at the specified KV value on the brushless motor and compare that up against the actual KV of that brushless motor. We're going to see the differences if any and we're going to take a look at why that is occurring. Lastly we're going to break down the results of our findings and discuss that before we close out the video. Well guys, let's get started and take a look at the process that we can use to measure motor KV values. If you have a brushless motor that is far out in its KV value, tell us about it in the comment section below. So we have our first phase here being checked. This is going to be the yellow wire and the red wire and we have our multimeter set at AC voltage. Let's fire up the drill and measure, take that first reading. So there we go, we got 674 as our first voltage reading. We will then take our yellow lead on the motor and replace this with the white leads. Now we're measuring red and white. We'll fire up our drill and repeat this on phase two. So we saw about 670 measuring phase two. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna switch our black lead over to our yellow lead and measure our third phase here. So we want to make sure these wires are separated so that they don't short out. If they do short out while we're doing this, it's going to act as a brake and it's going to be making it a little bit more challenging for us to spin the motor up. So phase three, here we go. So there we go, we saw about 674, it was fluctuating a little bit, and that's probably because of the equipment that I'm using. We get some small bit of fluctuation, plus the tolerance that's built up within the windings of our motor. So the last thing that we need to do is go and measure the frequency. We want to know what kind of RPM we just got out of this battery here, specifically because as we go and use our drill more and more, the RPM that we're getting out is starting to slow down. So we're gonna go and measure it this time. I have not recharged this battery since doing the measurements last day. So here we go, we're gonna go and measure the frequency that we're getting. Now we can take that data, place it right onto the radiocontrolinfo.com website and find out what kind of KV value we're dealing with on our brand new brushless motor. That's how you test a brushless motor and find out its true KV value. Here is a list of many motors that have been tested over many years. They consist of multiple different companies. You got High End Technology, Castle Creations, Leopard, New, Turnigy, E-Flight and TP Power and then we have a brand that comes with a ready to fly airplane here I threw in as well. So I got all my motors, I tested those that have not been tested before and I threw it on this chart and you can see the values do vary negative to positive from minus around 5% here to positive 10% here on one of the Leopards. Now I do have two more Leopard 4882 motors but they are currently being hogged in radio control vehicles so I was not able to measure that and I'm not able to remeasure this because I think something's wrong with this specific motor, the 4082 coming in at 1105. I should probably remeasure it and find out. Nonetheless, you got values that are relatively tight. And what I did is I took an absolute difference of the total values here. So I 
put a separate column in there and got rid of the negatives so I get a true average of the percentage that we're dealing with. And the average that we're dealing with is about 2.85, including this 4082, this mystery measurement here, why it's so far out compared to the others versus it would be 2.48% if we ended up removing this one value. So you can see that the values are quite close. There you could see the results. We do see the specified values are actually quite close to the actual values that we're able to measure for a motor's KV. This brings us to the big question, why would a motor manufacturer want to misrepresent the KV value specified on a brushless motor? Now I have to tell you that this question originated from a viewer and that question was actually linked to a forum post where a motor manufacturer was being challenged by a battery manufacturer. And that battery manufacturer wanted to make sure because they felt they were doing it for their business that the motor manufacturer should have good data that represents actually what brushless motors can do. And what we've just gone through and represented is that motor manufacturers do this quite well. In addition to that, you can actually extract the amount of torque that you get out of a motor just from the KV value. If you take the inverse of the KV value, that leaves you with the KT value. And from there, you can extract the amount of torque for every amp of current that you put into that specific motor. Obviously, motors have limits in terms of how many amps that they can actually sustain, and that comes into play as well here. That brings us to the very first reason as to why a motor manufacturer would not want to misrepresent the KV values on their motor. It is very easy, as we've demonstrated here, to measure measure the KV value with very simple equipment here right at home. Now the second reason is that motor manufacturers, generally speaking, the, the bigger players in the motor scene have a range of brushless motors, right from the lowest KV value that they offer to the highest KV value that they offer within one series of brushless motors. And that could be like 20 plus brushless motors that are quite available for you to purchase. With a massive range of KV values for the consumer to purchase, it literally makes no sense for a motor manufacturer to misrepresent the KV value of a brushless motor. And the third reason is that the KV value on a brushless motor really doesn't represent the power that you can extract from that brushless motor. In fact, all you're doing when you vary the KV value in one series of brushless motors is altering the amount of voltage and current that that brushless motor is going to operate on. For example, the highest KV is going to have the lowest voltage with the highest amount of current drawn, and the lowest KV motor is gonna have the highest amount of voltage with the lowest amount of current being drawn. You compare both those motors, you multiply those values out, and you get the same amount of wattage of input power going into that brushless motor. So there you have it. You don't actually gain any type of performance by seeing differences here in KV values. So when you really look at it, it is nowhere close to the same as a lithium polymer battery pack when LiPo manufacturers are specifying C ratings. There is a standard how we measure KV values. There is not a standard on how you measure LiPo C rating values. It is very easy to measure KV values right here at home using basic tools. It is not easy to measure the C rating of a lithium polymer battery with basic tools. It's really that simple. Motor manufacturers are doing a really good job and the lithium polymer battery pack manufacturers really need to catch up in terms of accuracy of their specifications. Well guys, hope you enjoyed that video. As always, like the video if you do and don't forget to hit that sub button so that I can see you guys in the next video. Thanks a lot for watching. See you in the next one.